one of the more challenging issues when it comes to apologetics or like explaining the reasons why we believe what we believe is the subject of petitionary prayer. And so the problem basically goes like this. We pray to God for things, right? Good things, holy things, but sometimes, many times, the Lord doesn't seem to respond in the way that we want him to respond, which begs the question like, why, right? Is it because he doesn't care? Is it because he's indifferent to our lives here during his pilgrim journey? Or is it because of other reasons? And so basically given all that, I wanna spend some time talking about the subject, the reasons why God might delay or even deny us when it comes to petitionary prayer. And so the first example that kind of comes to mind right off the bat is the notion that sometimes, many times, we're just quite honestly not praying for the right things. And so for example, let's say you're praying for a new job which you think is more appropriate to your own particular set of gifts and talents. Or let's say you're looking for a significant other, right? So both worthy and, and good petitions in a certain sense. But let's say, for example, that the reason why you're looking for these things is because you're actually looking for some form of external validation. Like you're looking to have something in your life which the world finds to be important and valuable to make you feel better about yourself. Well, if you think about it, if that's actually true, well then if God were to give you what you're asking for in abundance, then that would actually leave you less free as opposed to being more free. And of course, one of the things we know about the Lord our God is that one thing He will not typically do, He will not typically give us something which will leave us further away from actually becoming the person He's calling us to be. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean the Lord will actually deny you the new job or the new boyfriend or the new girlfriend. But if he does delay in terms of granting you these particular petitions, maybe that's the reason why. Because he knows, again, that in granting you this particular petition, it will lead you farther away from becoming the person he wants you to be. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing that comes to mind in terms of a particular reason why God might delay or deny you in terms of petitionary prayer. But the other thing that comes to mind, the other reason, is that possibly you're not ready to receive the gifts. And so for that reason, God might delay in terms of answering your prayer. And quite honestly, you know, I find this happens quite a bit when it comes to discerning one's particular vocation in life. And so just to kind of cite an easy example, let's say there's a young guy who's discerning a possible vocation to the Holy Priesthood. Now, as you might imagine, a lot of people in that particular situation, they want clarity, right? They want clarity sooner rather than later in terms of their own particular vocation. But God often responds with silence. And again, it's not because God doesn't care, but because rather he knows that the person isn't ready for their final vocation, if you will. And so maybe that particular person, for example, needs to work in a secular job, maybe multiple secular jobs. Maybe that person needs a date for a while. Maybe that person just needs a whole bunch of life experiences which are actually necessary to provide pastoral ministry in an effective and practical sort of way. And for that reason, God actually delays in terms of answering the final question of what is my vocation, not because he doesn't want to give the gift, but because again, the person in question just isn't ready. But that brings us to the final thing I want to talk about today, and I want to spend some time on this. And this is from this video that I saw from Father Casey Cole, who is a priest and also a member of the Franciscan Friars. And so basically the idea is this. One major reason why God might delay or even deny us in terms of answering our petitionary prayers is because, quite honestly, we have a skewed notion as to what prayer is all about. Which is basically to say this. We often think the main purpose of prayer is to basically bend God's will to do our will, to get him to do what we want him to do according to the particular way in which we want him to do it. But if you think about it, even when you say it out loud, it sounds kind of weird, right? So the idea of prayer is not so much to bend God's will to our will, but rather to do the reverse, right? To transform ourselves so that our will might become God's will. And Father Cole's underlying point is that as long as we persist in this kind of skewed and distorted notion as to what petitionary prayer is supposed to be all about, then we will always ask for the wrong things. We will always be frustrated when it comes to prayer. And it just so happens that Father Cole's particular point in this regard is supported by the Gospel itself, particularly the Gospel of Luke chapter 11. And so basically in the context of this chapter, the Lord talks about the subject of prayer. And so very famously, he says, ask and you will receive, search and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. But you know, that said, I think something we often forget when it comes to the story is what happens just before, right? So before the Lord tells us to be bold when it comes to petitionary prayer, we hear about how the disciples approach him and ask him how to pray, right? So Father John Ricardo talks about this. And so basically what he says is that, you know, the disciples, obviously they've been used to praying to the Lord in different ways, but now they see Jesus beholding the Father in heaven and they perceive a certain closeness and intimacy that they don't have. And so as a result, they ask him, you know, Lord, teach us how to pray. In response to which the Lord teaches them the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. 
But you see, the thing I want you to notice here is that by teaching them the Our Father, by teaching them the Lord's Prayer, the Lord is not simply passing on to them this empty nursery rhyme that they're meant to kind of repeat over and over again to the end of time. No, instead, He's actually giving them a window a window into his own closeness and intimacy with God the Father. And so from that perspective, we're meant to read and interpret the Lord's Prayer, otherwise known again as the Our Father. And so obviously as a matter of view, the Our Father goes like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, the thing I want you to notice right off the bat when it comes to the Our Father is that basically it consists of seven petitions, seven things that we're basically asking God the Father to grant in response to our prayers. And so just to kind of run through the list, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So again, seven petitions contained in the Our Father. But you see, the thing that's really interesting about these petitions is that in a certain sense, if you group them together, they provide for us a certain window into the heart of Christ, and therefore a certain window into this closeness and intimacy that he has with God the Father. Because if you really break it down, what is the Our Father actually telling us to do? Well, first of all, it's telling us to relate to God as both God and Father and everything that implies, right? So closeness and familiarity that comes with relating to him as Father, but at the same time, reverence because he's also the Lord our God. Secondly, is teaching us to seek God's will above all things, particularly the realization of the kingdom of heaven beginning right now in the present moment. Thirdly, it's inviting us to focus on the here and now, as opposed to fretting about the past or worrying about the future. Fourthly, we're called to let go of any attachment to negative emotions or sentiments, you know, things like anger, bitterness, resentment, or, or lack of forgiveness. And then finally, we're called to remain close to God in every manner of circumstance, mindful that in reality, the devil is always lurking and evil is always present. Okay, now obviously there's kind of a lot going on here, but hopefully you can kind of see where we're going with this. So the takeaway message is that when it comes to prayer, especially petitionary prayer, the whole goal of petitionary prayer is not so much to feel a certain way, and it's certainly not to bend God's will to our will. But instead, the whole point of prayer in a certain sense is to help us look more like Christ, to help us become more conformed to the person of Christ in this world, such that eventually in time, we might better discern who God wants us to be, what he wants us to do, and perhaps more to the point, what his hopes and dreams and desires are for our very lives. And you see, the whole idea is that once we get to that place, you know, that holy and blessed place where truly our hearts are aligned with the sacred heart of Jesus and everything that implies, you know, loving what he loves and hating what he hates, we will realize in retrospect that God actually answers all the prayers that truly correspond with the deepest desires of the human heart. And may God bless you all.